And onto our fourth stage, Grape Garden. Oh, I hope they're green grapes. I have hope. The background is green, so they might be green grapes. I like green grapes better than any other kind of grape. Sue me. Please don't. So, welcome to Grape Garden, ladies and gentlemen. Inside this stage in particular, we're actually gonna get an introduction to a unique power that is within inside of Kirby's Adventure. And we're gonna be using that power, well, we're supposed to be using that power to get a switch. However, I screw up. I also apologize for episode length going forward because I kinda wanna keep it being one episode equals one entire world because after this, this is where the game gets a little bit long and I start to suck a lot. And I mean a lot. Wanna know what's the worst one? The worst one is going to be the next episode, which I believe is gonna be the longest episode in the entire project because I do abysmally bad. But here is our UFO power. We can fly infinitely, somewhat similar to what we could do already. But more importantly, we don't need to worry about hitting up constantly in order to move forward. For this one, you can charge your blast up. You can shoot a laser beam normally, or if you charge it up, you can shoot a full on star. So pretty much it's as if Kirby was just an evil alien. Now, here's one thing I want to figure out. With how the sprite looks on UFO, it kind of looks like Kirby is actually inside a UFO himself, rather than turning into the UFO. So would that be the case? Is, is, UF, is Kirby just inside a UFO? Or has Kirby become the UFO? Decide amongst yourself whether you want to believe. Anyway, there is a hidden switch to the overworld inside of this area and what I'm doing is I'm trying to remember where it is exactly. It's closer near the end of this room but it is inside this room so keep that in mind. Now one bad thing about UFO is the same bad thing about a lot of the power-ups in this game. You get hit once it falls out. The only difference is if you're in the air and you're hitting the B button to fire at that time there's a good chance you'll end up going into a suction ability which will end up killing you. That has happened to me a few times. So, let us go on. Luckily, there is another thing we can use, such as ball, which is utterly pointless. It is the most useless ability in this game. I think it's worse than sleep, because it does nothing. Anyway, we're going to use these waddle doos right here. You can tell where the unique block is up there. It has a little border, but I didn't see it at the time. Instead, I thought it was somewhere back here. So I'm just destroying every single block I can, like some idiot who doesn't remember this game, which is pretty accurate because I honestly, the amount of times I had beaten Kirby's Adventure are probably twice when I was younger. I'm trying to remember where exactly I played Kirby's Adventure because I never had an NES growing up. And I never had, uh, I didn't get this game a copy of my own until I got the Kirby Dream Collection, so I had to have got I had to have played this game at some point in my childhood, but where exactly I don't know. But here's where the switch is, so let's press the first switch and get ourselves another crane game. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna start cutting out the crane games and the mini games since I have shown them all off at this point and there is no need for me to show them off anymore they just take up time you'll know if I win or lose because I'll get a life count right after I get out of the stage anyway we have tornado right here I love tornado it's a lot of fun to use it's a shame that we don't really see it much nowadays because the more I think about it I don't think it was inside Return to Dreamland, nor was it inside of Kirby Triple Deluxe. Huh, so maybe Tornado was one of those powers that was just ultimately retired. There are a couple of powers like that within inside the Kirby series, and some of them get combined. But, go through the door, and I come out, and as you can see, I got two lives, which means I got a two-up. So, now we're on to our next stage, which this one, I believe for the Switch, I got a little bit confused for because I do believe there is a Switch inside this stage as well, but it's gonna require some fancy work to do. If there is one, I'm trying to remember because I recorded this footage a little while ago and 
I don't remember everything. I should really get in the habit of recording, you know, the audio commentary alongside it. Maybe this could have been mitigated by doing live commentary, but me doing live commentary on an 8-bit game that, even though it's considered easy by many, I can still somehow suck at? Oh no. I need to concentrate on the 8-bit game. Same goes for 16-bit games. 32-bit games? Oh, those will have live commentary. No worries. Although I do think there is one 8-bit game I am planning to do live commentary for. Because that one's not too bad. And that would be Wario Land. But that's neither here nor there. I should really get into recording Wario Land. Alright, so let's go upward over this way. We have a little door right here. Go inside it. And we can get a maximum tomato. And kill some squids. They were neither kids... They were just full squids, and now they're dead. Just like everything in the Kirby universe, it dies by being ingested by the pink puffball of death. Seriously, Kirby games are grim when you think about them. I mean, come on, this this little adorable puffball murders and consumes everything it eats. And according to the right back at you anime, it's a full on universe inside his stomach. It's rather creepy. It, it's, it's like Megatron's stomach inside the Transformers comics currently. But here we have some fun with two mini-bosses that go on opposite sides. These are annoying. I hate it whenever we have to fight two of them at the same time. But that deals with one of them so we can get the crash ability. So why don't we crash this room? I really like Crash in the later games, but I guess I was wrong. Looks like there is no switch inside this stage. I'm thinking of another one, but let's go up. Oh, so close. Number two is also good. It's always, it's good to go number two. Being number two can be a good thing. All right, so onto the third stage. There is a switch in that stage, but it's rather simple. But Quick Draw, I don't believe I've shown this mini game off yet. If I have, I apologize, which is why I'm leaving it in, so I probably haven't. Pretty much, fire the gun at the right time, and if you're faster, you'll end up winning. End up hitting the A button, and what'll end up happening is you'll get a penalty. I've only beaten DDD one time throughout the entire project, and that gets you a three up, actually, but you have to be very fast in order to beat DDD. And I mean really fast, within 5 milliseconds of that fire button showing up. Because if it's 10, then what'll end up happening is you'll end up getting hit by DDD. It's ridiculous. But they all have the same stats. I believe Bonkers, you have to beat it before 16. So I've netted myself at least one, one up. 11. Okay, so DDD is 11, which means you need to be below 11 milliseconds in order to beat him. But... That's one up. That's a good thing to grab, so I deal with that. And let's now go to our third stage, in which it looks like we're going to Kabula's parents. Maybe they're pissed off at the fact that I killed Kabula. Now, for this one in particular, there is a switch that is hidden in another area. But for right now, we're going to light this fuse right here and go inside this cannon. So, jump inside the cannon. Wait for the fuse to go off, and to space we go. Or higher into the clouds, whatever comes first. So, that's another life right there. That's the only point of this cannon right here. I think it's to introduce you to the concept of cannons. Now this room, just fly up. Constantly fly up. Because the place where the switch is, is going to be at the end of this, I guess, room or area of the game. And as long as you're flying upward like this, nothing will hit you. All those propellers are in the background. So, at the end, so let us descend down to the door that's right there. That's where our switch is going to be. So, in we go. And here it is. Reveals ourselves another museum. Those things are ultimately useless, especially once you get arenas into the mix, because you can get better powers from the arenas. So, let's fly over this way and get to the actual stage. If you go through the stage normally, then there is a good chance that you could end up missing that hidden room if you don't know that it's there. So, just keep that room in mind, and you get yourself a switch. So, let's go across this way. Uh, 
Officer Kibble right there and Broom Witches. Devour the Broom Witches. All they want to do is clean Kirby, and all you do is consume them. And we got ourselves some high jump abilities now, which is actually kind of useless inside this stage when you think about it. Ooh, the Mighty Parasol. That always helps. Uh-oh, Crash Bomb. Crash Bombs are annoying. Especially inside later stages where they start bundling two to three of them up at a time or one of them when it comes to a specific switch but i will get to that once we get to our sixth level in the game so let us fly across and i believe we are at the end of the stage already so let us fly up ow and in we go so let's do ourselves a little mini game and get ourselves another life I love doing that whenever the song goes off. So, on to stage four now, and we've unlocked ourselves an arena with that one. So, what is inside this arena? Something that you don't want to deal with. It's one of those scare beetles that gets you backdrop. So I was thinking, okay, maybe there's something inside here. Ball and sleep. Wow. Way to make me even think less of museum's game. So, let's go across get the mighty parasol and then immediately lose it like a genius all right so let's scurry across hitting everything with my mighty parasol be it knights waddle doos flying creatures that i still have not learned the name of and i really should i really should and things that were from right back at you that ended up launching the warp star for some reason. There are a lot of liberties taken in right back at you when you think about it. And you have to question a lot of them. I know I've been talking a lot about right back at you, but I find it to be important because many people seem to forget there was a time in which Nintendo series actually, you know, were getting shows and it wasn't Mario. I mean, we had an F-Zero anime, which was the greatest thing ever. We had Kirby. Then at the time, that was really the big time for uh, children's television shows. I ended up mentioning earlier about Jetix, and that seems to have actually gotten a lot of people to remember Jetix a bit. But a lot of the shows that they're talking about were later in Jetix's lifespan, unless you were in Canada, because Jetix was the main thing in Canada, to my knowledge. We had, when I was younger, a lot of those shows that like right back at you digimon or even uh i think briefly the f-zero anime showed up on the four kids network that was on fox kids you know what else showed up on fox kids the one piece dub never forget never forget but here we have a new turtle enemy that gives you a pretty interesting ability, but compared to the other ones that you can get, I prefer the other one. Gives you the throw ability. They would later combine these two abilities into one another, I believe, into suplex itself. Uh, both throw and backdrop. So that wouldn't be until, I think, Superstar Ultra, honestly. Just like how the backdrop ability is you can still inhale things but instead of doing a suplex move on them you end up throwing them don't worry we're not going to be seeing throw too much in fact there's only i want to say four enemies of them in the game unless you go out of your way to get throw so no worries but let us move on to the fifth stage which we have a lot of time left i don't like how much time left all right so invincibility candy going hyper kirby even though hypernova would not be a thing until kirby triple deluxe oh i can't wait until i do triple deluxe it's gonna be a lot of fun all right and kill the rock oh great i'm out of my hyper hyper does not last long in this game that's what i've noticed while playing through it it does not last long at all so let's go through the door and this door right here there is no point to this room except to just get an extra life in the middle. That's the whole point. I don't go for that life because I just want the healing soda. 
which is why I totally lost part of the healing ability. If you go into those middle blocks, there's a life on the inside, but honestly, I think that is not worth it because there are so many spikes that are around. It's ridiculous. Okay, I remember what we're doing. There's another switch inside this place, I believe. But we gotta deal with some Meta Knight enemies first. Meta Knight has a very expendable crew. They don't seem to care that they're going to get eaten by this carnivorous pink puffball. I mean, seriously. Is, is that like a requirement that Meta Knight has to disclose? Okay, there is a chance that you will die if you meet this pink puffball. If you don't, you get a raise. Actually, that might actually be an incentive as to why he keeps getting people in Dreamland. I mean, it wouldn't be until technically two games from now he tries to take over all of Dreamland because he finds that they've all gotten lazy. Hey, I can be as lazy as I want to. I blame King DDD. He has a no exercise policy, and it is a great one. But just as always for these Meta Knight gauntlets, as I like to call them, Pretty much just inhale the enemies because using any ability takes more time and more hits than simply just sucking them in and then swallowing them. So, that deals with that. And let us run across, get ourselves hit, and I remember what's gonna happen right now. I'm gonna get wrecked and get killed. So, go me. I'm really not good at this game. I just realized that. Huh. Maybe I really should have done a practice foul, and out of nowhere, he comes and kills me. That's always the greatest, isn't it? Whenever an enemy comes out from the ceiling that you didn't see, and then they end up killing you. I mean, I should realize that. They're here, but I didn't. So, let us use Fireball to get across. Just going fast. Right, and here's the exit. Gordo's everywhere. I remember this room. This room is not friendly. Pretty much, actually, a better strategy to do as I've had to go through this room twice for another reason that I'll disclose once we get to the sixth level of the game. You could actually use the D-pad to run faster and run through that area. And if you jump at the right time, you won't need to fly at all. Takes a little while, and you need to know the timing just right, but it is possible. But that takes care of level 5, so that reveals level 6. Where I'm going to be spending the most time because I forget one thing. Oh great, we got Scuffies. Die, Scuffy. I hate Scuffies. hate them in all of their... Th they're just existence. They, they look adorable, but they're really just pure evil. Especially when you end up trying to inhale around them. I mean, come on, they turn into evil monsters, and even when you kill them, they have a ridiculously large explosion occur. Completely unnecessary, Hal. Completely unnecessary. Could just have them explode normally. But no, they have to explode all fancy-like, and now I'm afraid of Scoffies. Right, so let us continue to flounder about this bomb block, experiencing a lot of slowdown, which I I want to ask this for those who have an NES copy of Kirby's Adventure. Is the slowdown present on the NES as well? Because I ended up finding out from oh, one commenter, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name at this time. They ended up saying that the slowdown inside of Kirby's Dreamland that ended up occurring was natural as well. That also happened inside the Game Boy cartridge. And I always figured the slowdown was part of an emulation problem that this game is pretty much attempting to do, which is just pure emulation. And that's where I was curious. So for those who have an original... Kirby's Adventure 1 is slow down normal in that game on the NES. I'm just very curious about it. It's not present, I don't think, inside Nightmare in Dreamland, but this room right here, the room I just died in, like an idiot, because I ran into a ghost without even attempting to do anything. You need to light it up because there is a hidden door inside here. That is the whole purpose of light, just to light up these corridors, which only shows up twice in the game. So, absorb this one. 
light up the room and try and find the corridor which is behind you but I don't realize that I think it's in front of me like an idiot which is pretty much me in a nutshell when playing this game and doing post commentary I can point out how much of an idiot I am which is a very big one so got cutter right here and this is when I realized, okay, I'm not seeing anything here, so maybe it's back over this way. Which it is, it's near where you ended up lighting up in the first place. Now there are other ways to get light, but not too many. One of them is actually to absorb parasol and a crash bomb. And you can end up getting the light ability through a mix, which is probably the worst thing you could get in general, because honestly, there's uh, no point to it. Just like there's no point in me keeping this in. Why did I keep this in like an idiot? See, I'm going to make fun of myself for my editing fails and for my failures at playing this game. There's much to make fun of me for. All right, so going over this way, keep going. You're, you're getting you're getting warmer warmer and that's me hoping it would be a screen nuke so instead we're gonna use sword completely lose sword and there's the egg trance to our next switch and the last switch actually of great garden which reveals a warp star station for you that warp star station can take you back to any of the other stages but the moment you come back through here guess what everything's dark again isn't that what you always wanted? Uh, so dumb. But let's absorb light again. Light up this hallway. Might as well use light. It's not going to be used too often. All right? Get ourselves a beam, even though technically for the boss for this stage, you're not going to want to use beam. You're going to want to use high jump, as we're going to be seeing. But, deal with that. And now let's get to the end of this stage, shall we? Kill you. And here's an interesting little puzzle. Use the stone ability to hit these little pillars right here. Hammer works as well if you have hammer. Hit this one right here. You move the life up and hit it again, and you'll move it up again. So that's very beneficial to you. Just always do it in that order, and you can get yourself a life. Interesting thing I learned about lives as well. If you end up going into the game and leave the area, come back into the area, and I mean like the full level area. If you do that, then you'll actually end up causing all the lives that are inside stages to respawn. So you can infinitely farm lives. How long did it take me to learn this? I was in the last stage of the game. Yeah. But that deals with that. And so we have our next boss. So I recommend having high jump. And hey, look, it's Cracko Jr. So what you do is you jump up and Cracko Jr. is going to be destroying the platforms. Do not attack Cracko Jr. I did not learn this, as you can see by my life count, until this attempt. Because pretty much Cracko Jr. is invincible. You have to wait for him to destroy platforms and get to a certain point. After that, that's when the real boss fight begins against Cracko. Yes, Cracko is going to be a reoccurring boss, and Cracko is still more threatening than Wispy Woods. Now, another thing do not try to outrun Cracko. If you do, you run the risk of Cracko speeding up like crazy, running into you. Remember, hits you once, you lose your power. Hits you again, you just get hurt. And this is a large area to go through, so do not try to outrun Cracko. Just keep up with him like this, and you'll be fine. If you're fast enough to do it, then that is good for you. And look, see, right there, I went right through Cracko Jr. But that deals with that. He goes into the boss arena. And now it's time to fight regular old Cracko, which is actually even more of a joke than he was inside of the last game, which I don't get why that is the case. Pretty much he will just give you the high jump ability, which you can use to constantly run into his eye. That's how we're going to be pretty much using the entire time. He doesn't summon waddle -doos like he did in the last game. No, he just summons instead the high jump guys that you can absorb. So let us keep going through his eye and get to the end of this. 
two more hits ought to do it. Nope. And one more hit. Should be the end. And there you go. That defeats Krakow. And gets ourselves another piece of the Star Rod. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This is Roxas1359, and I'll see you guys next time.